Well, good morning, YouTube. It is September 20th, 2023. It has been a long time since I posted a video. Uh, life just keeps throwing stuff my way and keeping us really busy. But I guess that's a good thing. Uh, I won't get into the details of that, but I will try to post more videos going into the fall um, and get back on track and as far as posting one at least once a month here. Uh, but for those of you that are new to the channel, do me a favor and please hit that like and subscribe button there at the bottom. Uh, again, guys, it doesn't cost you anything. It's free. Uh, it really helps out my channel and helps me, uh, gives me the ability to create more content like this. Uh, for those of you that like riding and off-roading and the outdoors, this is the channel for you. Today, I am in one of my favorite areas uh, near where I live in the Doniana mountain range in southern New Mexico. It has been raining here quite a bit. Our monsoon season came a little bit late. As you can see, the uh, ocotillos, or ocotillos as they say here, are in full green. And the desert is pretty green for the most part. Uh, but this is actually our coming up on our fall, as in most parts of the country but uh here we are out on a ride and there is the old beast right there the krx 2020 the very first model that came out and she is still running like a champ uh, i haven't been using it much lately but i the day was too nice and i finally have a day off and i figured i would come out here and get some riding in so it was a really really nice day it's about oh i'd say at least 78 degrees no wind, sunny, but pretty cool. It's supposed to get up into the 90s, which is a lot better than our triple digits we've been having lately. Um, about the KRX, mileage. Everybody's really asking about the mileage on it and how that has been going. Uh, I am about 16,800 miles when I just got out and checked it right now. Uh, so it is still kicking. Issues, no further issues. As of yet, knock on wood. Don't have any wood out here to knock on. Uh, the only thing that I will throw in here is a little bit about this Graves exhaust. As you can see, it is on there and that is the mount that comes with the KRX and the mounting system that comes with Graves. It came with a kind of a rubber type of uh, grommet if you will that holds that attaches this uh, behind this metal plate and kind of holds the uh, exhaust snug well it turns out that that isn't exactly heat proof um, I don't know what kind of material it was but it shrunk over time and kind of peeled off and fell off and as you can see it's kind of hot I'm not going to touch it but it uh, has some play there so I picked up some exhaust tape it's kind of a ceramic material and i think i'm going to have to pull this off and put that in there so it'll fit snug i did put these springs on here to hold it in place <clears throat> just so it won't shake around so much it's not going to go anywhere but as you can see um got really hot there and kind of melted that off but she's still running like a champ i still have of course the shock therapy on there that was done uh, shortly after I obtained the vehicle uh, Same tires right now running the X uh, gladiator X comps love these things. They uh, Are very very good tires for being out here in this type of terrain. There's a lot of jagged rock desert stuff as you can see but um, They just last if you're looking for a good long-lasting tire They are a slightly rougher ride but with the shock therapy and, and the system on this uh, and the way the suspension is on the KRX, you're not going to really notice it that much. It's slightly uh, more bumpy than it would be with a softer type tire. But I would personally say I'm, I'm good sacrificing a slight bit of ride quality for the peace of mind. These are 10 ply tires. They are extremely, extremely hard to puncture or tear out here. Um, the one flat that I did get on this, oh, that's great. You can see the where I plugged it. That was a 16-penny nail. 
and that's went all the way through and I'm telling you to plug this thing was a job to force that plug in these tires are so uh, rugged to force that plug in took a lot of strength and a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of oomph to get it in there but love the tires so if you're looking for a good set of tires and you ride in this type of terrain I highly recommend the Gladiator STI X comps those of you that are new to the channel some of the additions I have on here is the um, Super ATV arms for the back they're 100% aluminum so they uh, take away a lot of the weight off of the stock and they are actually stronger than the stock but uh, you can find them at Super ATV I forget what the price was on them but I can throw a link in the bottom for you guys um, again for people that are new to the channel I'm just going to cover a couple of things that uh, some of you might not know that I have I have the S and B particle separator this is generation 2 and it kind of sits up there and for those of you that don't understand the way this works we live in a very very dusty area in the desert down here so for those of you that live in colder climates you're not gonna or the forest you're not gonna have as much issue with this but we have dust down here like crazy we really the joke is we really don't have a winter we have a spring with blowing dirt so when you're riding out here on these trails it's super dusty and super fine um, and it just clogs your air filters crazy so you really got to go through a lot of them out here um, and it's you know they're not cheap and for those of you that live in the southwest you'll understand have <laughs> those of you that, that ride in similar uh, terrain but the SNB particle separator generation 2 there's different places you can mount it I had mine mounted up there and the way it works is each one of these holes here you'll see it, it sucks in the air before it goes into your air filter or air cleaner if you will however you want to define that each one of those little holes has a, a fan on it that is turning it's connected in to the ignition system so it only comes on when the unit is running and it draws very little amperage at all. I think it's like five amps or 10 watts, it's not a lot. And as you accelerate on the Gen 2, which is this one, as the RPMs go up, it increases the speed on each one of these and on the how fast this is turning to accommodate your air intake needs. So as you accelerate this will get you'll hear it spin up and spool up faster and as you decelerate and the rpms drop and you're at idle you'll hear it kind of rev down and it sounds kind of like a jet engine but it's a simple principle it sucks the air in here and it spins it very quickly and basically throws the dust using centrifugal force against the sides of the inside of that enclosure and it's what they call it on the website is it's a vortex it works similar to an upright vacuum cleaner it basically flings the dirt at a using the spin uh, like a gravity if you will against the sides and that is then ejected out of the bottom here out of these two holes so it catches about 93 to 94 percent of all of the dust as it goes in spins it makes it hit the side and then ejects it out the bottom there of those two holes in the bottom then the cleaner air which is very clean goes into your air intake here and it comes with this attachment and that then goes into the air filter which all of you know if you own a KRX is behind the seat I'm not gonna pull it out but I can tell you ever since I put this in I've changed the air filter one time and I was changing it every two months or every month and a half and these things are about 60 bucks this thing I can ride it for like eight months and it still looks super clean so if you guys own on side by side KRX or other it doesn't necessarily have to be one of these s and is a great product and they make it for other types of side-by-sides as well so I know it's available for a multitude of different brands Polaris Can-Am 
uh, Honda. They they have different different ones, uh, different models for each one. So that's a really good investment to have. Inside the cab, I have it wired. Um, all my accessories wired here to the panel. And basically all I'm running on here is pod lights and light bar on the top. And that's wired right into there. The other thing that I have is the rugged radio system that is designed, uh, this particular um, setup, you buy it designed for the KRX. And they have different packages. They have them ready to go for Honda, for Can-Am, for uh, different brands, Polaris, whatever you guys have. You can buy this uh, for the different models and makes, uh, depending on what kind of side-by-side -side you own. But you'll see the headset there, and it gives us the, the ability to communicate via intercom. Here's the other headset with our passengers over here. So even with all the noise and the trail riding, we can basically speak to each other, similar that you'll see inside aircraft or things like that. And the nice part about it is if you have, uh, if you're riding with people that also have the rugged system, it's also a radio and you can communicate with the other cars uh, as well. And these are basically your mic key ups. There's also a mic key up on the headset. So you can communicate with the other, um, side by sides that you happen to be riding with uh, in your group. And the range of this thing is crazy. I mean, literally I've spoken to guys that are, you know, six to 10 miles away. They push a ton of watts. So when you key up, you'll notice it. Uh, but you have great range on this. I have ran into a couple problems whenever like somebody is in a, a valley or an arroyo or behind a mountain, but we still can usually get through. So that's the other setup I have. I'm gonna try to avoid the sunlight here. My pod lights right here. I have three facing forward and one facing the side on each side. That's kind of so you can see at night the wildlife and things that happen across the trail. And then on top up there, I have the main light bar. And these are uh, made by Quad Boss. I've owned these for years. I think this was these were the same lights that I had on the very first side-by-side -side when I started the channel, which was the Kawasaki T-Rex. Um, moving along to the windshield, Super ATV flip-up windshield with the shocks, has the closed position, and they're basically just hydraulic, and they go down, up. I have it open today because it's such a great day, but you can close it completely or have it just cracked um, about that far open right there. Not expensive mirrors. I think these are Kemimoto's. Picked them up on uh, Amazon, I believe, I think. As a matter of fact, I think these were given to me by Kamimoto for uh, just showing them in the video, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but it's been a while. Um, and then these are just Kamimoto grips right here to get out. I have the Kawasaki roof um, with the skylight, which if I could do over again, I would have it without it because it's so hot down here in the desert southwest. And the last thing I'll cover is the KRX rock sliders. Um, right there. I had those put on early on when I got it. Well worth it. They protect you if you're going over rocks and uh, things of that nature. One thing I can't show you, I'm not going to crawl under there. <laughs> I have the, uh, the uh, well, I can show you the Kawasaki uh, A-arm guards right there. Those are the tough plastic ones. I have them on both sides right here. Really, really tough plastic, and you ain't gonna puncture that unless you're really going crazy. And then on the bottom, I have the the plate and the frame stiffener. Kind of hard to see down there, but um, it basically it's also super ATV. It's a piece of uh, metal that's really, really strong, and it's bolted in, and it basically stiffens the frame on the KRX and gives you a lot of. Uh, a lot, a lot of less movement and bending of the frame. So if you do crawl over rocks and things like this or hit them, you're not gonna bend the frame and then have your unit, you know, <laughs> cockeyed for lack of a better term. But the thing's running great. Um, some of the questions I get, again, I've answered them before, but I understand if people are just clicking on it and don't have time to look at my other videos or haven't, um, so you can go back and check those out. Uh, I have several videos on this um, Oh, there are a little mini light bar on the back also wired into the panel quad boss. Sorry, and that is uh, Illuminates 
uh, back if you're at night and you need to back up and can't see. Um, what do I do as far as maintenance? Change the oil religiously. This has known nothing except the oil that came in the factory from the very first oil change. And then from that point forward, it has been nothing but full synthetic AMS oil. I'm a true believer in synthetic oil products. I run them in all my vehicles, my truck. I just think you, if you do go over your mileage, um, which I normally don't, but if you do, you have that level of protection. It just lasts longer and it's just better protection. The oil doesn't break down um, as easy as conventional oil and these machines run hot. And as you know, they are high revving. So there's a lot of friction taking place in there and you want to reduce that as much as possible. So that's kind of it. Again, my apologies, life is busy and a lot of you know stuff happening in the world i hope everybody's doing good i will try to get back on track and put a video up for you guys uh at least once a month i appreciate all the subscribers hanging in there and staying with me and i appreciate all the views uh you guys have any questions please drop them in the comments below i try to answer them the best that i can and i will try to get you every comment on there and uh i will uh follow up with a uh, some riding in the next video and hopefully some good drone footage of when we were out doing some uh, rock climbing last week that uh, I still have uh, the footage of but I haven't had time to create the video on it so um, I hope everybody has a fantastic day please like subscribe share and we'll see you in the next video